What's happening, everybody? This is Tony with TBD Designs. And uh, what I'm doing today is I'm going to go ahead and put this video together to show how I'm going to set up and sublimate this dry erase paddle. I um, basically went to the Dollar Tree today and picked up a few things, and I got asked on the, um, this Cosmos Ink sublimation page <laughs> to do this. So, this is going to be my first video. So, I hope it turns out good. And more importantly, I hope somebody's out there able to use the techniques um, or improve upon them just to get to where they want to do. All right, so um, this is the actual paddle that I purchased. Of course, a dollar from Dollar Tree. Now it's um, I hope it wound up here, but you can see it's like real thin hardboard um, with a dry erase coating on both sides. So I'm hoping this doesn't melt. Um, so what I'm going to do first is set up a template um, so using this paper, my two-sided tape to keep it down, and it's a pen to trace, and of course the item. So I'm going to go ahead and start the process and um, kind of walk through everything. So normally when I'm doing my um, templates, I just trace the item on a piece of paper. I'm going to turn it this way so I can kind of see. Um, so I'm going to use this two-sided tape to actually... I got this from the Dollar General for a dollar to hold this in place so it doesn't move so we can get a real good um, accurate outline of the device. So the process is basically going to be outline the device, scan it, import it into your uh, whatever software you're using. Of course this thing is all jacked up. And then um, try to vectorize or you know get a good sharp outline with shapes in your program. So you can then um, expand it a little bit for your bleed edge if you're going to use sublimation. And then um, you'll have it set up for uh, whenever you're ready to go. Okay, it's a protective wrap on there. I'm like, what is this? Alright. So what I'm going to do is just basically put a couple of pieces on here. And those will be removable once we get it all traced up. And again, this is my first run at uh, trying to sublimate this paddle, so we'll see how it turns out. So this is a regular 8.5 by 11 sheet. So you put it tape side up against the paper. And I'm going to try to keep it centered and with the same amount of space on both sides of the page. And hopefully I can keep it um, parallel to the edges, which will help you when you scan it um, to kind of keep things square in your... Um, program. All right, you can see it there. So you basically just want to trace it as close to the edges as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect because you can play around with it in your program. And plus you're going to be printing your uh, design on your subplate paper with a larger bleed edge. So you're going to make sure you cover all that anyway. But you at least want to make sure the design you want to put on it is included in this area. All right. So you can see that turned out okay. I did miss a few that line between here, but um, once you scan it, then since this is a straight line, you can actually connect that, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in my scanner. Okay. So the next step, we want to scan that outline of that dry erase paddle that we just made on that paper into the computer so we can actually uh, eventually convert it in whatever art software we use. So um, this is an Epson Workforce 7510. It's like the first sublimation print I converted over. You can see the CISS tank on the side. Continuous ink supply system. And the tubes that run around to the uh, tanks and I mean uh, cartridges on the inside. Uh, I just upgraded to a Workforce 7720. Um, with the Cosmos Inks, I want to give a shout out to Angelo and the uh, Cosmos Inks family because uh, the videos really got me re-energized to get back and um, start doing some more <laughs> work in this line. So, um, depending on what kind of scanner you have, you know, the, the actual buttons you push may be different. But the way I do my templates is, um, let me just back it all the way out. Um, back it on out. It's just... To, um, home 
So I like to load mine in the corner and your scanner bit should be marked like with different letters, uh, page size. So this is letter, so I'm in the corner for letter. And that's why I left that space in between the side of the page. Um, and in doing that, you can make sure that your scans are going to be square. Um, so then what I do is I hit start scan, scan the PC. Well, it's not the short, just in case somebody has the same scanner. Right. Scan the PC. The last user and then it'll populate with your PC name. And that's TBD Designs is the name of my PC. And I hit OK. And what's going to end up happening is it's going to pop up on the screen once it's done in the folder where I have it set up to save my scans. So I'll go ahead and um, once it says done, I'll zoom in over there to the computer. So right now, uh, you can see the progress is almost done. And once it's done, you'll see the uh, folder pop up that I have it configured to uh, save all my scans and it should pop up. There it is, okay. So, that image 002, that's gonna be the document. It uh, looks like it's saved in a JPEG format. So what I'm gonna do, I hope you can see it, is um. I'm going to right click it and rename it to um, dry erase paddle outline so I know what it is oops know what it is so that's that and I also have a folder here that I keep all my work related stuff in so I go to where I want to save my template basically and I'm going to drag it over there that's an old one I tried to do, so I'll delete that out. Alright, so it's in here. So let me close that out. Let me go ahead and open that. So you can kind of see it opening up the page. So that's the outline. And like I said, right here is where I kind of missed tracing it, but since that's going to be a straight line, we can just use our Coral Draw to connect that in. Alright, so I'll close that out. Alright, so I'm going to open Coral Draw. It's opening on my other screen. I'll pull it over once it gets up. Boom. All right, new document. So I have it cut, I mean, set for 13 by 19 sheet. Okay. So now I go to File, Import. And then I go, it's already there, Sublimation Templates, Dry Race Paddle Outline. Now we know it's 8.5 by 11, and that's the size I just said, so I'm just going to hit Enter. So boom, it's already in, in the um, the size. Because if you import at the wrong size, your template's not gonna match the actual item. So now we got it in there. So what I would like to do is I um, zoom to fit so that you can actually see it there. Okay, so I switched my uh, mouse so it'll be, the pointer to be crossed here so we can um, do these alignments and rotations a little bit easier. So what we're about to do now is we're going to rotate this uh, the template so that it's square basically. You can see there that it's some space in between these crosshairs. So what I'm going to do is select my rectangle tool. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to make it a clear field, but I'm going to change the outline color to something we can see. Okay, so then I'm going to zoom in to the selected box so now we can see it up close. Then I go to my object manager, I select the bitmap, go to transformations tool docker, and I'm going to rotate that bitmap. I'm going to do like 0 0.05 degrees. So each time I hit apply, it's going to rotate it counterclockwise that much. So what I'm going to watch for is the point where this black line is parallel to this red line. So I hit apply. You can see it's moving up a little bit. Every time I hit apply, it changes a little bit. So I'll just speed it up a little bit. All right, so that looks good. So what I can do now is just go back to Object Manager, select a rectangle, and you can move it down. You can um, actually, I want to move. 
So, that'd be one select tool. And you can see it's about the same there. All right, so we zoom back out to fit. Okay. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, since we have this outline square, is we're gonna use some of these shapes to actually rebuild it. So we'll know we have a good, clean template. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this rectangle. And I'm gonna basically break this shape into one, two rectangles and we have to fill in um, the space that's left here and you'll see what I'm talking about. So go back to your rectangle tool. I'm gonna line these crosshairs up with the top edge and the left edge and click and drag it to where it's lined up again with the top and the bottom left edges. And make it clear and we're gonna make it red outline. So now what we want to do is we're going to change the corner radius to get those rounded edges. So that's up here. So it's rounded edges. And what I want to do is bump, bump that up and you can kind of see how it's changing. Until it gets all the way even with our template. All right, it's like 0.75 or three quarters of an inch. All right, so that's good. So we're gonna repeat the process for this portion. So I'm gonna go down here. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so we can see. All right, so go back to your rectangles tool, still selected. So I'm gonna line it up, the crosshair with the left part of the trace in the bottom. Once I get there, I click and I drag all the way up to the top here. And this line, it wants to be, you know, even with that side. And it says edge, so I don't want the edge up there, so I can let go. Clear fill. Change the outline color. So now what you can do is you can go in and um, select your select tool up here. Once you click in. And you can select this rectangle and just pull it in a little bit. Alright, cool. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fill both of my rectangles in. Because I know I got them lined up real good. Alright, cool. So let's zoom out to fit. So that's basically what we have right now. So that's rounded. We haven't rounded that yet. But, um,. We can do that now, I should have done that before. So I'll click it and it's probably gonna be the same radius. So I'll go back up here and just type in 0 0.75, hit enter. All right, cool. So let's just make sure, let's just make that clear again. Yeah, and it lines up. All right, cool, black and black. So now all we got left is to fill in these two areas. So I'm gonna zoom in to about 200 scroll up a little bit so to do this what we want to use is our three-point curve we're basically going to make a curve that connects this curved line where it meets this block up here to the point where it meets this one down here we do that on both sides and then we'll fill in that area so uh, we go to a three-point curve tool so again, when you get on the edge, it'll let you know I'm on the edge of this. So I just drag that over until it's like on the intersection of that point. Click and hold it and do the same thing down there where it intersects. Let go and then you can drag that curve. Boom. And then you click it to fit. Do the same thing over here. Get it on the edge. Click and hold. Drag it down to this other edge. Let go and then adjust just by moving the mouse. Boom. So now that we got those two curves in, we come over to our, I like to do the select tool just to make sure I get everything unselected. <clears throat> come to your smart field tool, click in that area, and watch over here what'll happen once I click in that area. 
so that curve was created. Well, it was actually a, a shape, so it's still selected. I'm just gonna fill it any color. So there you see, boom. Same thing, Smart Fill Tool still selected. Click in that area. We got a new curve up here. Let's make that one another color. All right. So now let's zoom out to fit. Now we got everything covered. So what I want to do is so oh, hit the select tool. I think I just made another one on accident. So I'm going to select the four items I just made and weld those together. So I'm in the select tool. I click the top. I hold down control. I click the bottom. I actually shift. So hit the top. Hold down shift. I click that bottom so you can see the two are selected. I click that left curve. Now that's selected. I click the right curve. Now that's selected. Now go up here and I select my weld tool. So it welded it all together. So these other two curves, I'll, I'll delete those. So I'll just click it and hit delete. Because those were the curves we drew here. So select tool selected. So you see all those nodes right there? We want to get rid of those just to um, make sure it doesn't cause any issues. So I'm just going to zoom in to about 400 and move my mouse down. So all those are nodes. So I go to my node select tool, the top or the shape tool. I call it node select. Click it. Then I'm able to draw a box around all these I want to delete. So let's just select all of those. Hit delete. Select these, delete, select these, delete. Now I don't know if this is really necessary for what we're doing for this template, but I like to just clean it up as much as possible. So I'm gonna zoom in to about 800. And um, you can see some, a few over here. I'm just gonna delete those. Cool. Delete those, all right. Let's zoom back out to fit. So let's do this. We're gonna select our new outline. I'm gonna do a clear fill. And I'm gonna do an outline by right clicking. I should have said that, another color. And then I'm gonna change the size of it to make it a little bit thicker. So you can see, boom. That's our outline. So that'll be the actual image of or the where the area you want to fit your design in. So now we want to create a bleed edge. So I got that curve selected. I go to contour. And now I had it set up for 0 0.25 or a quarter of an inch offset. And then make sure in Corel Draw you choose outside contour. I don't want to fill, but I do want to line. So the line's going to be blue. I just hit apply. And that's our bleed edge. So now I go back out to Object Manager, hit Contour Group, right click it, and say Break Contour Group Apart. So now I got two separate shapes. So I like to rename mine, so I click on the red one, and I right click it and click Rename. And we're going to call that um, Paddle Outline. And the blue one we click, right click, Rename. We're gonna call that bleed edge. So now you got the template set up. Just go ahead and click that bitmap and hit your delete button. And there you go. That's your template. So let's save it. So I'll go to file, save as, uh, go back to that sublimation templates. And I already did a trial run of this, so you just name it dry erase paddle template and save boom all right like i said this is the way i did it it's not the only way it may not be the 100 percent right way but it worked for me i hope it helps you out if you have any questions feel free to hit me up all right